Used cars are dirty, crammed with unwanted fluids and materials that have to be stripped from every wreck. Three, two, one. This shop near Birmingham is one of more than 1,500 across the UK, called end-of-life vehicle or ELV stations. They're a key part of the auto recycling process. Nigel Dove has pioneered the design of these workstations that make a wreck ready for recycling in record time. This is probably the most uh, up-to-date rig that's out there on the marketplace. It speeds up the production time. A two-man crew can process up to 40 vehicles a day. That's one car every 12 minutes. Time is money, especially in the car recycling business, where there's a shredder at the end of the line that has to be fed with a constant stream of clean wrecks. Where the shredder eats cars at the rate of upwards two, three hundred an hour. The ELV is the critical point in the process. So it, it's a question of doing this as quickly as you can. It's all laid out for speed. So if you've got two trained operators working flat out, the throughput of this type of uh, setup is very high. What tends to throw a spanner in the works is when you can't gain access to the airbag, for instance, or there's rubbish in the car, you can't get the bonnet open. All of these things delay the actual process time of treating the vehicle. Airbags are very, very uh, dodgy items. You've got to treat them with a, with a lot of respect. There are instances of people being very seriously injured with them going off. All airbags have to be neutralised as they contain an explosive charge. Also, the explosive contained in some of the airbags is very toxic. So we don't want that going through the shredder. The only way we can neutralise an airbag is to deploy it. Because you use all the explosive up in the act of deploying the airbag. Most airbags are electronically fired, so you need a, a voltage to set them off. Every car's airbag deployment system is connected to the aptly named auto bang equipment. All liquids also have to be removed before shredding. All hazardous substances must be removed from cars, which even means getting the oil out of the shock absorbers. The shock absorber strut acts as a tank. The very act of punching a hole in the strut seals it creating a vacuum where nothing moves. Nigel modified the tool to pump air into the strut so the fluid can flow out. And there you go. The vehicle is now ready to go onto the high rig. On the high rig, the crew drains oil, coolant and any leftover fuel. Ordinary power tools won't do. Electricity could create sparks. So any moving parts have to be powered with air instead. So here <clears throat> we have a, an air drill if we need to drill through certain sumps or cast casings. For heavier duty steel casings, we use a, an air chisel, and the air chisel will pun punch a hole in. Modern scrapping techniques are far gentler and safer than the old-fashioned approach. A lot of the time the cars would be put on the side. The guy would stand there and he'd swing a pickaxe into, uh, into the vehicle. Uh, this is a, a sort of a modern-day version. This is the fuel extraction system. This has got a brass pick that punches into the tank and makes the hole. And the bucket is a containment glass. The brass pick makes a much softer impact with the metal surrounding the fuel tank. All it creates is a hole. 
rather than creating a spark which may ignite inside a tank. Scrap metal is sold by weight, so the ELV teams also have to be on the lookout for dodgy dealers who bulk up their wrecks with rubbish. So they'd have some used engine oil, which they'd pour into the petrol tank to get the weight up. You also tend to find they fill the petrol tank up with water and also hose down the inside of the car, because all the, all the foam will absorb all the water and they'll, they'll stick in the spare wheel well about half a hundred weight of hardcore bricks and whatever. What the guys can do here is see whether that's good quality fuel, which can be resold, or dirty petrol or water or whatever it is, so they keep their petrol tank or their diesel tank with nice clean fuel in it. Legitimate wrecks contain precious metals like rhodium extracted from catalytic converters. Again, we looked for something to take the need for electricity out of the system. So we've come up with an air-powered power pack. The power pack is similar to the jaws of life used to free victims from car wrecks. These will cut up to 21 ton cutting force. So taking off a uh, exhaust pipe is fairly easy business. An innocent looking wreck can contain a cocktail of dangerous materials, like the mercury in an interior light. Contains a small amount of mercury. It's very, very poisonous. So all mercury components are removed and isolated. There you go, dry as a bone. Once all the liquids and fittings have been removed, the car is ready for wrecking. Compacting crumples a family car into a small block in seconds. More than 25 million cars are recycled each year. Lined up bumper to bumper, they could circle the globe nearly four times over.